Welcome to Process to Profitability, a podcast all about the tools and strategies you need to serve your clients and grow your small business, hosted by me, Samantha Mabe of Lemon and the Sea. Join me as I chat with creative entrepreneurs and small business owners about how they built and grew their businesses and how you can do the same in a way that fits you. Let's get started. You're listening to episode 107 of Process to Profitability. Today, I'm talking with Crystal Hellman about product photography. We've talked about brand photography way back in the beginning of the show, but I wanted to cover products specifically for those of you out there who are makers. We chat about why it's important to have branded images and how product photography is different than other types of photos. We talk about using the images that you have effectively so that you're getting the most out of them, as well as some tips for taking images of your own products. Crystal also talks about working with a photographer and what you should be looking for to make sure that you are getting the most out of your investment. As a full-time brand and commercial photographer, Crystal serves the business community exclusively through styled imagery meant to boost sales, attract your ideal audience, and show off all your hard work. In her five years of business as a photographer, she has launched a course, held four workshops, and supported many events across the local and online community to help educate and support other ladies in business. This was a really fun conversation, and even though I'm not familiar with products or product photography. She gives a lot of great information that you can take moving forward no matter what it is that you are using your images for and what you have images of. Hi, Crystal. Thanks for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. So I read your bio at the beginning of the show, but I'd love if you could tell us a little bit more about who you are, where you're from, and what it is that you do. Absolutely. So I'm um, originally actually from Texas, but I am based here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I am a commercial uh, product photographer and brand photographer. So I essentially, that's just kind of fancy words for the fact that I work with uh, strictly business owners um, and help them just, you know, find fun ways of being able to tie in both their brand or their product um, to just be more visually appealing to their audience um, in a world that everything visual matters a lot. (laughs) Um, So that's just, you know, a little bit about me and what I do. Um, I am the owner of my business, uh, Crystal Clear Photography, um, and I've been in business for five and a half years, finding new and fun ways of, you know, servicing those business owners. Awesome. So how did you get into product photography specifically? So I got into product photography specifically uh, because my market actually kind of found me. Uh, It's kind of a funny, you know, an interesting way of saying it. But um, I started off working with just businesses. And, um, you know, initially I thought it was going to be more service-based businesses, you know, just doing headshots and things like that. And then I decided that I really liked doing flat lays. And so I started doing flat lays. It's just a fun way for some of the service businesses that were doing shoots to kind of get some stock photos for themselves. And from that, I had actually found that there were a few people who reached out to me and were like, oh, you know, you should totally teach people how to do this for, you know, the ones who who don't know. And so I started doing a workshop um, in person here in Phoenix, teaching people how to shoot their own flat lays. Um, And when I did that, majority of the audience that was actually coming to my workshop were product-based businesses. So I started getting an opportunity to meet a lot of these business owners who were just really struggling to have uh, better photos. They didn't have necessarily a huge budget um, and they just, they wanted to be able to to shoot some things better on their own. So, you know, I started networking with them, working with them and hosted um, five workshops before I finally decided to pivot my business early last year to servicing them because they they needed me. They needed somebody who could help them um, either do it better themselves. So from a mentoring aspect or to shoot stuff on their own because their businesses started growing. And um, so they reached out to me and I had a few of them that were like, Hey, you know what? Um, I'm at a point now where I just can't do it myself and you do it so much faster and it's just easier. Um, Could you handle it for me? And so I started taking on clients on a monthly basis, um, doing their product photos for them so that they could have consistent um, and fresh content for their social media marketing. Awesome. So way back at the beginning of the show, we talked a little bit about brand photography, but for those who aren't familiar, why is it important to have custom 
branded photos for your business? It is really important because having uh, consistency through everything in your brand um, is important. And I think a lot of people just forget that the images are a part of your brand and how you create the visuals that are going to relate to your audience, but are also going to be something that people can start to recognize you for. So like an example for a popular company is like Target. Um, all of us ladies love Target. Uh, Target knows its audience very well, but their visuals are very tailored to what we want to see. We want to see a pretty, you know, beautiful home and we want to see the chair that we want to buy from Target in that home in a similar environment, the way that we would like to see our house um, styled. And so it's really helping you carry over the message and the importance um, um, the process behind your product, the value of your product, um, all of those key things that are really important to your brand overall and help create that loyalty um, and consistency through everything that you're doing. Okay, so you have been offering product photography and that is not something that I'm very familiar with, but I wanted to talk about it for all of those product people out there. So mm -hmm. how is it different from other types of photography? So product photography is different because it is centric to the product. So most of the struggle or the, the difference, I guess you could say some struggle for the business owners, but the difference is that um, you've really got to find a way to show off the product in an environment where the product is still the main focus, um, which can be kind of tough. And that's why a lot of people end up wanting to just outsource that product photography because they have a hard time figuring out product placement, um, lighting. Um, you have to go as far as the styling and the, even the outfits that the people are wearing in the photos, um, things like that that are going to be really key to showing off the product, but again, kind of not taking over the product so that when you look at the photo, you know that your eye is going straight to that product and not to something else that you're not selling. Um, so hopefully that helped answer your question. <laughs> yeah. So my next question is for people who have images of their products, maybe some brand photos, how can they make sure that they're using those images effectively and actually taking advantage of them, making sure that they're getting what they kind of want to out of them? Yeah, so um, they are going to want to actually use all of them in multiple places. Um, and it sounds funny for me to say that, but um, one of the, <laughs> the biggest struggles I see is that people aren't actually using them all because they're afraid that if they put too many photos out all at once, they're gonna run out of photos or that they're not supposed to cycle through photos. Um, and that's just not the case. To get the most out of your investment in having branded photos or product photos, you want to use them. You wanna use them in a few key places. Um, you can look at you know, my brand even to be specific that I've got um, the headshot that I use for, you know, different, um, you know, podcasts or different trainings and things like that is the same headshot that's on my website. That's also the same one that sometimes I cycle through my social media. So I, I feel like businesses think that everything needs to be completely new and brand new all the time. Um, and that's not always the case because you do lose that consistency. So really feel like you can use your photos and you can repurpose them in multiple places because not every single follower is going to be in every single place at the same exact time. So um, that would be my, my kind of advice and you know <laughs> tips to people is just to make sure to really use your photos and feel free to use them and cycle through them. If you haven't used them you know, in the past couple of weeks, go ahead and reshare that same headshot. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think that is something because we are so familiar with our social media and our websites, we know what those photos are. And so we think that everyone else is seeing them as often as we do, but really they don't. If we yeah. think about when we're on Instagram and we're looking at somebody's thing, it's very likely we've missed some of their images. Yep. Exactly. I mean, you could go probably look at some of your, you know, your favorite people's feeds on Instagram or something and go check it out. And you'll see that you might have missed a few photos here and there. Um, and again, that's that's totally OK. So I think that, that we somehow get that stumbling block, like you said, from just seeing it. And we feel like it's out there and we've seen it so much. Um, but it's like in, in reality, the same person who's looking at Facebook at noon on a Tuesday isn't going to be the same person that's looking on Instagram, you know, five o'clock later on that afternoon or a couple of days later that week. Yeah. I'd also love to know if you have any tips or advice on 
kind of mixing branded photography with stock photography if we don't have a full library of branded custom photos that are unique to our business? So this is, um, you know, stock photography is a great addition to being able to add something to your feed, especially when you feel like you have, you know, a certain set of photos and you want to have something different to cycle in. What I'd recommend doing, um, there's so many stock libraries that are out there, so many fantastic ones to go and find a collection that is similar to your brand. Um, that way you feel like you're not posting something that's so far off that it wouldn't feel like it fits. And it usually you can find a stock shop that has like a good collection of, you know, 15 to, to 30 or so photos in one collection that you can purchase. And they're very similar to your brand. That way you can use them. Um, also customize it customizing the stock photos um, is key so that it doesn't feel like it's something that somebody else is using. So whether that's inserting a quote, um, whether it's zooming in on a particular part of the photo and cropping into that area um, and using that, um, you know, flipping it, rotating it. If you add a particular filter to your photos, you know, make sure to keep that consistency um, as well, but don't be afraid to use them. Feel free to mix them in. Just try to find a way to customize it and then try to make sure that you are selecting ones that do fit your brand so it doesn't seem odd to all of a sudden just have something really random pop up. Okay. So it's all about, you know, really knowing your brand and then having your images reflect that, whether it's branded photos or if it's stock photos and no matter where they're showing up. Exactly. And then just carrying over that consistency. So if you generally have images that are light and bright and have pops of pink, you might not want to grab something that's, you know, yellow and green and like all these other wild colors that's completely off brand for you. So um, it's just doing a little bit of research. I think sometimes we, we go to a stock shop and we feel like, okay, we're loyal to this one. It's the one that we're purchasing from. But if they aren't producing what you need for your brand, it might be time to consider a different membership and doing a little bit of research to find the right kind of photos for you. Yeah. What I found worked well for me is after I had done some custom photos, they were unservice based, so they weren't of my products, but I kind of put them in a folder where, I, and I could view them as the images. And as I would look at stock photos, I kind of dump them in that same folder. And if I could scroll through it and not be able to say, okay, this one doesn't fit, then I knew I had a good collection of things. Yeah, I love that. And that's, um, that's a, that's a really great way of doing it, especially if you're not using any tools. Um, because if you are using different tools, like even using things like Planoly or, um, plan that, that allow you to kind of plan out like your feed and your social media presence. Um, you can do the same thing, go in, and take those stock photos, carry them over, put them in there and see, you know, does this seem like it fits well? Does it seem like the color palette's a little off? Does it seem like the lighting is off? Um, those are going to be the things that people will recognize right away that it doesn't feel like it fits into your brand. And you're probably going to notice it too. When was the last time you checked to make sure your website was healthy? The only way to know if your website is serving your business and working correctly is to make maintenance a regular part of your to-do list. I've created a maintenance guide at lemonandthesea.com slash maintenance that will help you get a picture of how your website is performing, what's working and what isn't, and the things you can work on improving so that you can continue to show off your expertise and bring in more dream clients. Inside, you'll learn why website maintenance isn't something to put off until next week, 15 tasks you should be doing on a regular basis to maintain your website, and the tasks you need to do weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. Get the guide at lemonandthesea.com slash maintenance. So I want to get back into product photography, and I want to talk a little bit about those of us who maybe cannot invest in a product photographer for you know, every new product we come out with, what are some tips you have for shooting your own images? Yeah, making sure that you are in a very well lit room that is north or south facing will make a huge difference. Um, I say north and south facing because if you end up shooting a lot of things facing like east, for example, and you're trying to shoot it later in the day, you're going to run into issues with your lighting. Um, to be able to have enough consistency through shooting your own photos, having north and south facing windows that you can use is going to 
help you make sure that you have more of an opportunity for everything to be consistent, um, especially because as business owners, your schedule is probably all over the place. And if you're a mom, especially, you probably are only going to be able to shoot photos at certain times of the day when your kids want to cooperate a little bit. Um, so if you are looking at e-spacing windows to try to do photos and it's, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon and the sun's on the other side of your house, the photos aren't going to look the same. And lighting is one of the biggest issues that um, a lot of the students and the people that I've mentored have had problems with. That would be um, that would be one of the the biggest things. The other thing um, I could give you as well, uh, when it comes to lighting, because again, that that tends to be the number one issue, um, is to make sure to filter the light, because not everyone's windows are ideally north and south facing um, and it may not be an option for you so if you are facing east and you're able to shoot in the morning when the sun is hitting your window pretty intensely um, filter it with a white curtain a white sheet um, you can also order um, there are photography reflectors that have a white band in them um, you could put that up against the window to help filter the light it just helps soften it so that you don't end up with harsh shadows overexposure which means just too much light Lighting, um, and, and some of those other uh, inconsistencies that you can end up with in your photos. All right. And you had mentioned that a big part of product photography is making sure the product is the main focus of the image, even going so far as to pick out the clothes that the models are going to be wearing. So how do you go about constructing a photo shoot? You know, what do you think about? How do you pull all of that together? So all of the things. Um, <laughs> so as a, a content uh, director, as part of my, my, I guess you could call it my fancy title, um, I start all the way at the very beginning with a client questionnaire that I have my clients go through because I need to know everything about their brand. I need to know if there are certain shapes that they like, certain plants, if they're more of an organic natural brand um, versus a brand that has lots of pops of color and is more tropical. Um, I really need to know all of the those key things because they do go into how you decide to style and place your product. So finding out, you know, the ideal audience, um, you know, the setting, the colors, all of those types of things are going to be super important. So I start with a questionnaire to pull all of that information and all of that detail over. And then I go through and I construct a shot list. So I say, okay, here are um, the key areas that we could touch on. And I do talk to the owner quite a bit throughout the process because uh, some people prefer to do things on a more seasonal basis because they might rotate through products seasonally and some have things that are a little bit more evergreen. So depending on where they are in their business, we can construct a shop list that says, okay, here are going to be the four or five, you know, setups that we're going to focus on doing for your product. And then we're going to start breaking it down into, you know, this is going to be a lifestyle shot for in the home because maybe you have a beauty product and you want to see it in the home being used. So we will start with it in the home and we'll say, okay, we're going to do the first setup in the bathroom. And the bathroom is got to have white countertops because that's consistent to the style right now. And it's got to have, you know, little pops of greenery because she does have natural organic products. So we want to have a little bit of greenery in there. We want to have, you know, a tray. We want to show that this is going to be for a woman and the woman is going to be someone who's getting ready for work. So she's going to have maybe some makeup products and some other supporting items around it. So we really kind of take the idea and break it all the way down to what kind of things do we need to have present in the image to make it feel real and authentic? And then how can we take those items and try to pick neutral tones that are going to complement the product so that the product is still a forefront, but it fits well into the environment. All right. So for me, at least, that seems kind of overwhelming. So <laughs> if a maker wants to work with somebody who is a product photographer, what should they look for when they're trying to hire somebody? You know, what is that process like? How do you know that you're finding the right person? Absolutely. So um, first off, I always recommend a phone call. Um, and that's really big to me because I think being able to communicate with someone um, and talk to them about what it is that you're looking for and you're wanting to do with your product is very important. So um, my first recommendation would be don't just go through online channels or email. Um, get on the phone with the person that you're trying to work with so that you can find out a little bit more about that photographer. Um, ask them about their process. You know, Ask them how much are they going to support you when it comes to the setups you know, how many props and things do you need to provide versus what they might already have on hand. Um, that's going to be important to your budget. 
And then I would say lastly, making sure that you do get an opportunity to check out their own portfolio. So whether you ask them for things, if you don't see something present, um, ask them, say, hey, do you have some links to your portfolio so I can see a few examples? Um, that'll help you visually be able to see, is their style going to be something similar to what you want your photos to look like? Um, because there are lots of photographers out there, but we all generally have a particular style in mind or a certain way that we shoot things and that we do stuff. So you really want to make sure that you take a chance to look at their portfolio pretty in depth and make sure that you're comfortable with their work and not just assume that they're going to be able to do something that you want them to do. Okay. So when it comes to the style, like I'm assuming you look at somebody's portfolio and you say, okay, yeah, that is similar to my brand. You know, maybe it's light and bright and airy, but is there anything else you should be considering when you're looking at what they're producing versus what your brand needs? Absolutely. Okay. So for example, um, generally when people look up commercial product photographers, they get the um, very high end, very in studio um, simple look that generally can be like on one solid color. Um, it may look very, you know, very high end um, and very classic, but it doesn't have a lot of props. It's not as lifestyle like. Um, so it's even just going as far as looking at those styles. If that person's portfolio is primarily all of that, but you're wanting, you know, something lifestyle that looks like it came out of a Target ad but has your product in it, um, that's probably not going to be in that person's wheelhouse because they're type is different. Whereas for me, I'm the opposite. People come to me because they want something that is styled. Um, whereas for me, it's really hard to do just the boring, I call it boring, but it's, you know, just the very simplistic shots that are just the product and like nothing else. Um, I want a styled environment. I want that lifestyle look. So that's just my style versus someone else's. So it's even going as far as, you know, looking at that or even just looking at the lighting. Some photographers um, are really into the trend of shooting in more of a moody tone, which means that there's more dramatic shadows and, you know, muted colors and, and things like that versus me, I'm light, bright, um, and airy kind of like you were saying, uh, with a little bit of contrast. So my style is completely different. So it's looking at that and saying, is that what I want all of my photos to look like? Because that's going to be more than likely what it's going to come out to. So really looking at the lighting, the coloring, whether or not the person has, you know, the type of style that you're looking for when it comes to the setups and stuff like that, you know, and looking at all of those pieces in a whole and saying, that's what I want. All right. And do you have recommendations for businesses that might want more lifestyle images or does it just depend on, you know, the brand that you're working with? I don't necessarily think there are certain types of businesses or products that should have um, lifestyle. I think it's just more of what is your audience responsive to. So, and, and I guess maybe you could say that because the, for instance, there's a brand I worked with that was geared specifically towards estheticians and estheticians as instructors and kind of gave them more of a very simplistic clean look was really what those people were more attracted to. Um, they're also looking for something more professional because they're in a professional setting. They're, that's their, their business. So they're targeting a business versus an, uh, a consumer. So in that case, they wanted something that was a little bit more simple and a little bit more high end versus something that was lifestyle. If they came to me and said they wanted lifestyle, it wouldn't really fit what their demographic is, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And so it sounds like it's all about knowing your audience, what they're going to respond to, kind of how they want to envision the product so that they can see themselves using it. Exactly. So if you know your audience really well, you should know right off the bat whether or not something lifestyle would be more suited to you, or if you're going for that sleeker, high end, you know, professional type look, because maybe you're targeting, you know, a profession or a particular business type. Okay. And if somebody wants to get product photos done, should they work with someone who does that specifically? Or can we kind of work with any photographer that we know? I would recommend working with someone specifically. 
quickly. Um, just because I've heard time and time again, um, business owners who have gone to friends or people that they know, or they you know had a wedding photographer they knew at one point um, who did some photos for them and they were disappointed because it didn't come out exactly as they expected. Um, when you work with someone who just focuses specifically on products and whether it's lifestyle or just more of that commercial look, we know the process, we know what we're doing, we know how you're gonna use the photos, what you need them to look like, um, the various orientations, things that are gonna work, um, whereas people in other industries might not. Would they be able to shoot a beautiful image? Absolutely. But is it gonna be something versatile to the way your business might be using it or how it needs to lay in your website? Um, they probably won't know those kinds of things. So there are, um, there's definitely an advantage, I guess you could say, to working with someone who is targeted specifically towards helping product businesses um, um, and, and businesses in general. Yeah, that makes sense. And I like that you mentioned knowing how the images are going to be used on your website because that's what I do. And when someone can come to me with images that actually fit on their website that I'm not trying to try to <laughs> make something work that doesn't, it's so much easier for me and it's better for their website. So yeah. a photographer who understands how that works and even you know, if you're working on a website and you can talk to the designer and say, okay, kind of which orientations and sizes are we looking for mm -hmm. to fill in these spaces, you can work with both of those people together to make sure you're getting the best images possible. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you even you know mentioned that because that's a big key piece for, for me and why I kind of do that discovery process in the beginning because I want to know like, hey, are you doing this for a website? Okay, great. Who are you working with? Let me connect with that person um, so that I can find out, you know, what does the layout look like? And so a lot of times I'll talk to the designer and have them send me the back end template that they're working on so I can see, okay, here's where this is going and um, and advise the client on the other side to make sure that the business owner does feel comfortable with the photos that they're getting, but knowing that the photos are going to work out with what the designer is doing with their new website. Yeah, absolutely. Because from a designer point of view, if I've designed it so that all of the images are square or their landscape and all the images brought to me are portrait, I can make those adjustments, but it's not going to be what we had originally envisioned. Exactly. And I mean, if they're, you know, shot on a, a white background, you know, you have a little bit more capability of being able to extend the, you know, orientation yep. and, and manipulate the photo to what you need. But if it's a lifestyle photo, you want it to be shot exactly as you're going to need it because you can't really extend that <laughs> in a way that doesn't look like it was absolutely photoshopped. Yes. And I've tried to Photoshop some of those sometimes for people and it is not fun and it never <laughs> turns out as good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. That's why it's like, you know, just working with the photographer. And, and that's another, you know, thing. It's like when you work with someone who focuses in that area specifically, we know these things and we advise you of these things when you're going through the process. So you get the exact outcome that you need. So there, there really is an advantage to doing that. So you just give yourself less of a headache. You feel like you didn't waste your investment um, and you get everything that you're looking for the first time around instead of having to go, you know, back and have a reshoot done or find somebody else to help you and all of that stuff. All right. So we always wrap up with three action steps, but is there anything else you wanted to share before we get there or other tips that you have? I don't think so. I think that, um, you know, I would just say if you're, you know, wanting more tips and things like that, just make sure to, to connect with me and let me know. I am an open book. I love to be able to advise people and help people. And even if I'm not the right fit for you, um, that's how you know you're, you're working with someone who's good because I can definitely tell you if I'm not the right fit for you. Um, but just be able to feel confident in knowing that you should definitely source out the photographers, talk to a few people. Um, don't just look at the price point, look at the value that the person has. Um, um, how much involvement are they helping educate you on things that you might not know about um, and really working with you as part of your team, so to speak, as opposed to just somebody that you're hiring. All right. Awesome. So can you give me three action steps that listeners can take today based on our conversation? Well, I would say uh, three action steps that you can do. Um, first off, know what lighting you have available to yourself. So go check out your room now that I've talked to you about north and south facing windows versus east and west. Um, go take a look 
know where you're going to be shooting at, assess that area and say, you know, is my lighting too bright? Do I need to have a filter or am I facing the wrong direction? Figure that out and get that sorted. Um, the second thing, um, make sure that you can put your product in an environment that people can relate to. That's the biggest struggle. So think about where your person uses your product, where you use it in the morning um, and find props and things that support that narrative so that your photo comes together and the style makes sense. And then lastly, um, don't forget to reflect lighting. So one of the other problems that people typically face is you go to shoot in a room, you have your whiteboard and everything laid out, you've got your products and stuff ready to go, but you're not reflecting light back onto the product. So just simply taking another board and lining it up so you have an L shape will help you reflect light back onto the board so that when you shoot your photo, it is a nice bright and white image versus kind of foggy gray or dark shadows. Awesome. And if somebody wants to outsource their product photography, what would be the first step they should take? The first step you should take is start researching styles that are going to fit your brands, um, whether you're going out to the social media, but also look at the portfolio of the photographer um, just to make sure that you are comfortable with the way that they shoot things, their style, um, and whether or not that fits what you're looking for. All right. Awesome. Thanks for those. As we wrap up today, I'd like to have you give us an example of how serving your clients or your students well has benefited your business. Um, it has benefited my business because it has just organically grown um, a significant amount. Uh, since I just focused specifically on product businesses starting early last year, I have a full set of clients that I work with on a month-to-month -month basis now um, just by educating people, giving back, um, and trying to provide them with other resources and tools. They grew their businesses and got to a point where they wanted to hand things off to me, and we now have a great relationship where I help support them in their business every month. Awesome. Can you tell me two things that you're loving right now? They can be business or life or both. Um, yeah, so I would say for business, I am loving my Planoly app. Um, I think it's an underused tool for people just scheduling social media um, because in order for me to be present in my personal life, which is what I'm loving in my personal life is being able to be there for my kids, running around with them, taking, you know, impromptu movie days and things like that, um, is being able to schedule out my content. So I am married to my scheduler and love my Instagram scheduler because it lets me still be visible and present to my audience, but allows me to be able to step back and focus on my kids and my family, which is super important to me. Yeah, it definitely is. So what are you excited for that's coming up in the future? So I am excited for the fact that I am expanding my team. So I'm going to be bringing on an associate photographer whose style is very similar to mine so that we can continue to take on more clients because lately I have been booked, which is great, but I still want to be able to service a lot of clients that are out there who have been wanting to work with me more recently. So I am hiring an individual who's going to be joining the team to help uh, make sure that people are able to get photos and we are able to take on a little bit more in our bandwidth. Awesome. That's really exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> it's a good step for us. Okay, so my last question is, where can people find you online if they want to connect? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on pretty much every social media platform from Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram um, at Crystal Clear Photography AZ on all of those platforms. Um, on a daily basis, you can find me over on Instagram, though. I do live there posting stories between me and my kids and everything else. Okay, well... Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I know that you have some courses that you have for product photographers. So can they find those on your website if they're interested? Absolutely. So if you go to my website, it's crystalclearphotographyaz.com. You can do a backslash flatlay dash method. Um, I have a course called the flatlay method, and it is designed to teach uh, either business owners or photographers um, my full method and mindset and process to shooting um, more intentional product and stock photos for your business. All right. So I will include all of that in the show notes for people to check out. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. It's been great. Thanks for listening to Process to Profitability. Please take a minute to leave an honest review in iTunes so that I can help more small business owners and creative entrepreneurs find the show. 